Good afternoon, guys. My name's Sandy. This is Sawing with Sandy. I'm standing out here in my red pine forest today, right in front of my general sawmill setup. That's exactly what I'm going to talk to you guys about, my sawmill setup. Now, I have a preference now after a number of years of sawing, and I'm going to tell you guys a little bit about it. I know many of you are out there and you might be getting into sawmilling and you want to figure out what to avoid probably the most. I'll tell you what I don't like. I'll also tell you what I do like and I'll give you at least my two cents and you can decide whether it's worth that two cents or whether it's worth anything at all. So we're going to talk just a little bit about that setup today. As you can see, I've done a little bit of housekeeping here today. You got to do that from time to time and that's going to be one of my talking points, housekeeping. I did a little bit of cleaning in there, got that opened up, and I started stacking up some lumber that I cut recently. And the last thing I got to do is obviously get rid of that slab wood, slab wood pile. If I don't get rid of it soon, it's going to get completely frozen, and that'll be there right till spring. So I guess I better get on it. Anyways, guys, here we go. Welcome back. So it all began with me going on the Woodland Mills website. I ended up ordering at the time a 2017 HM130. Now it's quite a bit different than this thing right here. This is like a new and improved revised version. This is substantially wider, at least a little bit wider. It also has some more bells and whistles. My older one didn't quite have the same bells and whistles. It was a solid sawmill. I cut thousands and thousands and thousands of board feet of lumber on it, but uh, it's definitely different than this one. So when I ordered that thing, it got shipped to me. It showed up. I was really excited. Not to mention, I also ordered at the time a bed extension. So one bed extension, no trailer, just the sawmill sitting on a platform. But I didn't have a platform at the time. What I had was essentially this forest. I hustled out here and I cut down a few red pines and I used them as posts. And then I also used them sort of as the uh, rafters and I threw down some tin and that was my lean-to shelter for a while. Pretty much like this one you see here, except I didn't actually have milled lumber. I actually just had logs, and these logs were great, except I didn't take the bark off them. That was a learning curve for me. By leaving the, by leaving the uh, bark on the logs, I ended up getting bugs into the logs, and then over time, after several years, I started questioning the structural integrity of the whole structure. And before it fell on me and I figured out that it wasn't strong enough, I got out of there. That came down and this one over here went up. So this right here, as you guys can see, I called this one the Hillbilly Hideout 2.0. Hillbilly Hideout 1.0 was right there. That was okay, but it wasn't great. This thing was a huge upgrade for me. I spent a great deal of time thinking about this setup. The one thing I wanted to have was I wanted to have my sawmill off the ground. My last sawmill, it basically sat on concrete blocks maybe about six inches off the ground. And I ended up just walking in the dirt. Walking in the dirt was okay when the dirt was dry. But when it became times like spring or we had a heavy rain or even the winter and snow blew in, it was kind of mucky and it wasn't very good. And so I decided this one was having a solid floor. That's what it's got. Perfectly, perfectly flat floor, perfectly level. This is 20 feet long by 10 feet wide. This is where my HM130 lived for a number of years after. I cut a lot of wood in here. I really like this structure. There is a few things though that I learned after moving up onto this deck. So as I got off the dirt and up into the platform here, one thing I realized very, very quickly was that I should have done this originally. I should have had a platform. Walking on a nice level, flat, solid surface was nice. Also because if we got any type of debris, which there's an awful lot of when you're sawing logs, you can just sweep it out of the way or use a blower, or get it out of the way and you have a nice spot to walk again. It's also nice because you're sort of up out of the elements a little bit. When we had heavy downpours, I didn't have water rushing in underneath my feet or under the sawmill. Uh, when we had big heavy snowfalls, I didn't have to uh, sort of trudge through the snow to get beside my sawmill and then shovel the snow away from it. Uh, I was just sort of up and uh, away from all that. But one thing I did notice was because of the steel roof on this, when snow did let go, I tell you, it created quite the mess. And if we have a look here, it's already starting to fall off the back here. When that falls off, the two feet off the ground platform is kind of nice, but it's definitely not high enough. It actually causes the snow to get up and above the platform and I still have to shovel it away. So my solution was gonna be to put a wall on the back of the sawmill here. I was gonna do that really early on. 
But then I remembered that I have to have a spot for the sawdust to exit the sawmill. And if the sawmill's traveling this way, the sawdust goes that way. If I built a wall on here, the sawdust would constantly hit the wall and then it would just accumulate on the floor and I'd be constantly scooping it. So what I ended up deciding to do was forego that wall, leave it wide open, shovel that snow out of there with the tractor a little more often. And that way at the same time, I could take the dust out. In a perfect world, I think what I would do is I would have the overhang on the roof go out a little further so that when the snow falls, it doesn't fall like right here. Because right, right there is the edge of the edge of the floor. So if it was out there a little bit further, then that's not going to be a big concern. The dust and the snow would still accumulate, but it wouldn't fall in on the uh, on the floor. So with this setup here, I had the sawmill right smack dab on the ground. The actual rails were probably only about that high off the ground. It made it really convenient for me to maneuver the log, especially when you got a big log up there. Because you could stand right in between the rails. You could lean over and you could adjust the uh, log stops and all that sort of thing. But what I came to realize after owning this sawmill, which is on a trailer, is that that low height was good for maneuverability, like maneuvering the log. But it wasn't ideal for much else. It was good for filling up the gas tank, but it wasn't good for much else. And I find after having that trailer, that trailer is the height you want. It doesn't force you to bend down all the time. It doesn't force you to kneel down. You don't have to sweep under things that are only like this far off the ground. And so if I had to do it again, I think the trailer's the way to go. But... The alternative could have been at the time for me just to raise the sawmill up. And I know for many of you who have been watching the channel for years, you've probably been telling me that. And I've been sort of hesitant. I've been thinking to myself that, nah, the lower, the lower height is probably better. But in hindsight, years later, the higher, the higher it is, probably a little bit better. Now, just before I go on and talk about the height of the sawmill, I just want to get back to this general setup. It was great being able to cut 16 foot, 11 inch material because I had one bed extension. I think if I were to start off from the very beginning again, I would absolutely certainly get one single bed extension at the very least. That's if I'm gonna be cutting anything except eight foot lengths. If I'm cutting eight foot material and under, I could probably just get away with this, no problem every day, never think twice about it. But if you're cutting 10 foot material, 12 foot, maybe 14, 16 foot material, you want that extra bed extension. Not so much because, well, not so much because you need to get right to that very last 16 foot, 11 inch piece, but because when you roll a log onto a sawmill, the likelihood of you getting it lined up perfectly end to end is pretty slim. I'm pretty good at it. At least I think I'm pretty good at aiming, but I still, when I roll it on the sawmill, sometimes I'm too far off the end, especially with this one, and I'm having to go to the end and I'm having to push on that thing so that I can just get it within the cutting surface of that sawmill. That becomes especially challenging when you're cutting 10 foot material and your log is actually like 10 foot three. You've got like one inch between the end of the end of the log and the blade and one inch between the end of the sawmill and uh, where it stops cutting. And so you gotta be very careful where you position that log. But if you have one bed extension, that whole issue is pretty much non-existent. Unless, of course, you're getting right to the very end, that 16 foot 11 uh, lumber. Then, obviously, you're going to have to be a little more careful with your log position. So back to my story about having a smooth wood surface or something similar like this and some of its advantages. When you guys come down to cleaning off the surface, this surface, you can scrape right down and get perfectly smooth. Whereas when I was out working in the dirt out here, you never really got things perfectly clean under the sawmill. Inevitably, some stuff would freeze to the ground. And if we got more rain, it would cause ice formation and you really couldn't do much with it. Whereas this right here, I've had instances where stuff has melted in February and refroze. I've come out here with an ice scraper, scraped it right back down to smooth wood and been able to keep working nicely. And one more point here about the smooth surface and why I really like having a nice wood platform like this as opposed to a covered shelter where I'm working out there, walking on the dirt. When you're up here, the surface doesn't change. It's always consistent. You can scrape away any debris. You can sweep it. You could make it good. When you're out there in the dirt, it's usually good. But every once in a while, if we get one of those warm cycles in the middle of February, things will melt and then it'll pretty much accumulate, right? It'll pool, it'll refreeze and you've been walking through it. So you'll have like some ruts 
and then it's not smooth anymore. You try to scrape it down smooth as you can, but then some parts are ice, some parts are snow, and it's not very safe. It's not as safe as if you're up here on a wooden platform. And so that's one of the things that I really like. So you guys can get a good look at my uh, most recent setup here with my HM130 Max on the trailer. So I am down at ground level now, but what this allows me to do is to easily get the sawmill out of there if I want to trailer it somewhere. Every once in a while, what I'll do, I'll actually pull the sawmill out of here and then I'll come through with my tractor bucket and scrape away any of the debris that I was talking about that often falls down under the sawmill. You guys see all the debris, the dust, the branches, whatever, that ends up having to be scraped out of there. If you have your sawmill really low to the ground, you end up having to scrape that out of there more often just because you don't have a lot of space between the top of the bunks and the ground. In this case, good amount of space, back it out of here every so often, scrape that debris out. With that in mind, you guys can see this side is wide open here to load, load logs on. This log deck is also allowing me to scrape all the debris out from this direction. That was one of my designs to make sure that was wide enough to just drive in, scrape out the debris and continue on. So one of the downsides of having it on a trailer in this position is if we look down here, I'm walking on the dirt again. Now this is what I originally started with when I started sawing and this is okay for now, but when it comes time for spring, if you have a look up there, that's a hill and that's a hill and that's a hill. And guess what happens with hills and snow? Everything flows downhill. And I have a feeling right where I'm standing is one of the more low spots in this area. So I have a feeling where I'm going to be standing is going to get pretty wet. I'm going to end up having to throw some boards down or do something, or I'm going to end up having a muddy mess through here. One of the downsides. One thing that I do like about this setup that I've sort of thought about a little bit more recently was having my lumber nice and close to where I'm taking it off the sawmill. The amount of distance from here to here is probably like 10 feet. It's nice to have a little walkway here and not a lot of movement to carry my lumber because then I'm not having to carry that weight. If you guys have lifted a big piece of green lumber before, it's not exactly light. And if you're having to do that all day, it's going to take a number on you, take a toll on you, especially if you're moving the lumber long distances. I really like this short proximity. I also like the fact that if I need to get this lumber out of here, I can get this sawmill out of here very quickly because it's on a trailer. And as long as I don't have logs there on the log deck, I can drive my tractor right through here with forks and I can actually pick that pile of lumber up and back her right out of here. Or I could at least pick the lumber up, back up, and then back in another trailer and dump the lumber into it. Having less hands-on work for big lumber piles is definitely a nice thing. So this setup is a little bit different than my old setup, which was up there. And as I said before, check out the playlist to see it. My old setup had all the dust shooting off the back of the sawmill. Therefore, I didn't really have to deal with it, except when it came time to bring the tractor through and clear it out of there. In the summertime, when there was no snow, I didn't have to worry about that dust very often because let's face it, how long is it going to take for like two or three feet of dust to build up? Quite a while. So I didn't deal with it that often. Over here, I have to deal with the dust a little bit more often. If you guys have a look here, the dust is shooting right where I've got the log deck. And so as I move the sawmill, I'm getting dust that's shooting up onto the rails there. And so I got to constantly keep that cleaned out. Like have a look right here. You guys see in there? Well, that freezes in there. In fact, that is frozen right now. And so I'm going to have to chip that out of there. Now, some of you guys have given me good ideas for that and I got to start doing it. Some of you guys have told me, just put a five gallon pail over there. Brilliant idea. Thank you for that. But uh, all the other spots here, dust is accumulating in there freezing with snow and I got to constantly clear that out of there so it doesn't get too too high. One thing I will say with this setup here because the roof line goes so much further out like it goes way off the back of the shed here I don't ever have to worry about the snow. It doesn't end up hitting my lumber pile here. It certainly doesn't get close to my sawmill and so that's one benefit. But one thing I am noticing and this problem is sort of reoccurring from my old setup and my new setup is that I don't have an overhang over top of my log deck. Because I don't, I constantly have snow on the logs. That's not a huge deal unless we get one of those freeze thaw cycles. When that stuff melts and refreezes, well, it's on those logs and it's an effort to get it off sometimes. That was the exact same case over here where I didn't have any overhang. And so that might be a great addition if someone's planning their own build. Figure out a way to cover up their logs, at least cover up some of them 
so that you're not gonna end up with that frozen mess there. And oh yeah, if you guys are gonna put a building and you're gonna make it that high and you have snow, just remember, unless you have some sort of wall there or cover, you will get blowing snow in there. It'll get all over everything. And that was the lesson learned. I think to the bottom of that beam in there, you guys see that beam way up there? I think that's like 11 feet high. That is too high. If I were to redo this building here, it would not be as high as it is. I'd probably stick with this right here. I think to the bottom of that, uh, that, that beam there, I think we're at about nine feet, whereas this one is way too high. And if we look at that overhang off the front, all that overhang does, because it's not very far out, all it does is basically deposit, deposit snow on top of my log deck. When I had logs here, that's all it did. It just flew off and froze itself right to the logs. So make that overhang longer and you'll be laughing. So we talked a little bit about why having this building up a little bit higher is kind of nice, keeping everything clean, getting you out of the elements, etc., etc. But there are some drawbacks with this building. So as I mentioned before, this building is 20 feet long and it's 10 feet wide. I designed this building so that when I had my HM130, my older 2017 model, and I had one bed extension, it would end up being about the length of this whole building. That gave me a little bit of room to stand. So I used to stand right about here. The sawmill sat right here. The logs would roll in from the log deck onto my sawmill. As I said before, because I had one bed extension, it allowed me a little bit of movement to cut everything up to, you know, probably 14 foot logs. If I was getting into about a 16 foot log, I just had to be more careful how it rolled up. Anyways, one of the things I didn't like about this building it housed the sawmill very nicely, but that's all it housed. So in a perfect world, I think this building I'm standing under, it could remain 10 feet wide, but I'd want it to be probably at least 40 feet long, maybe even 50 feet long. That way I could have all the lumber storage over here. I could easily walk down here and put the lumber on. And then instead of having this set up here, this would be wide open. Then the tractor with forks could drive in, pick up the lumber and back it out. Now on this side, I would still have my sawmill set up. I would have my logs over here being loaded by the tractor. The logs could roll off the log deck right onto the sawmill. And then at the back of the sawmill, I could deal with waste. Alternatively, because of this snow issue, instead of having all the slab wood, all the waste wood going off the back, I could have it coming off this end. So maybe this would be wide open as well. I would have some sort of a slab rack. You throw all your waste out there. The tractor has access, it could deal with all that. Sawing here, lumber there, waste there. I think that is the perfect setup. All right, so the question comes up, why do I not have that setup? Well, if you guys haven't noticed already, I live in some pretty dense forest here. This is a planted forest. It needs to be thinned, but it doesn't need to be clear cut. If I needed to have this big open space for like 50 feet of shed, well, I'd probably have to cut an awful lot of trees. At the time, I wasn't prepared to do that. At this time, I've certainly cleared a few through here, but I would still have to clear a heck of a lot. Could it happen in the future? Potentially. Is it gonna happen right now? Definitely not. Why is it not gonna happen right now? Well, here is my HM130 Max. This is my brand new sawmill, you guys know it, especially if you've been around the channel. This thing's now on a trailer. It might be a bit challenging for me to figure out a way to get my sawmill on a trailer up into that platform, especially if I have a lumber shed right here attached to it, I don't know how I would get around this and still be able to maneuver equipment. Not to mention the thing that's normally, normally transporting my sawmill, it's typically my tractor. That floor is strong, but it's certainly not holding my tractor. So that would be another issue that I would have to uh, overcome if I wanted to have that perfect setup with this shed like 50 feet long, I'd have to figure out a way to get that trailer up there. So what's the next best thing to a wood platform? A concrete pad. I think that would be the ideal situation for me if I were going to have a trailer. Obviously I have a trailer, so that would be my, my preference. I really like working up off the ground, but that doesn't mean you couldn't pour a concrete pad in here and have it, you know, a good six or eight inches off the ground. Maybe what you could do is you could make it like even five inches thick. And then you just build the soil up around it gradually so it's a nice drive on to drive off. You could make a roof structure over it, as I mentioned before. That roof structure could be like 40 feet long. And then I could still drive the tractor with the trailer attached right through the building. The only thing is you'd have to get creative with the post positioning. 
If you're going to store lumber at the one end of it, and you want to have the sawmill at the other end of it, you probably would have to get creative with how you get that trailer in there. Maybe you could drive in from the back and then back it in, I don't know. Probably a wider structure would be ideal in that case. Not only would that keep snow further away from the building on both sides, but it also give you a little more maneuverability inside that building. So guys, what's the holdback? What's preventing me from having that perfect setup that I mentioned? Well, for one thing, it's cost. It would be a tremendous cost for me to get uh, material out here to pour a slab that big. Not to mention, I'm in a pretty remote area here in the forest. There is no chance that I'm getting a, a concrete truck back here. And because of that, I don't even know how I would get that concrete pad poured. I'm sure there's ways. Maybe you have to mix it back here and pour it that way, but I couldn't even imagine the amount of work that would be, and I'm certainly not prepared to do that. One alternative could be this. Maybe you could build almost like a pole barn structure. So forget the concrete. Just take out some of the organic matter, you know, scrape down a good ways and start bringing in some fill. The fill is going to be stone based, just like you'd build like a road or a solid driveway. Pack that stuff in solid, just like my driveway. It becomes very, very firm. You pack that in solid and it's like concrete without that nice smooth surface and beautiful, uh, beautiful look after you clean it off, but it would still be a solid surface. And then you could have it as long as you need it. The cost would certainly be manageable and well, I could pretty much do all the work myself with my equipment. So that right there is probably more realistic for me. Maybe it's more realistic for you depending on your budget and location. But I think in a perfect world, that's where I would head. Is that happening sooner rather than later? I don't know, we'll see what happens. Anyways, guys, that's gonna do it for me here today. Appreciate you joining me. For now, this is my setup. I'm super proud of it. I built everything you see here. I built everything you see here with trees all around you. And I think that's the name of the game. Getting out, enjoying nature, using your sawmill to its potential, doing a few projects here and there, and well, having a great day. Guys, that's it. Give her the old like -a -roo. Make sure you subscribe, and I'll see you next time.